All right, Robert. Robert, uh, where are you from originally? Where'd you grow up? Uh, originally, well, I was born in L.A., uh, Northridge Hospital, and then uh, two years old, we, my dad moved us to San Diego. And then um, from San Diego to the time I was, uh, I believe, 11, 12 years old, uh, my mom, when my dad and my mom split up, um, I moved to uh, Hemet, uh, San Jacinto Hemet area. It's like kind of by Temecula. And then um, <clears throat> I got taken out of the house. Well, there's a story behind that too as well. But like uh, I, got, I got taken out of the house because my mom was doing drugs and like all that. <clears throat> but um, how, would you, how would you describe your childhood in general? Uh, pretty, pretty, pretty f fucked up, but like, no, it was pretty fucked up, but not as this, like, some kids had it like way worse. I can, you know, like. But what, what was, what was going on at home that was, if you'd call it? Well, I mean, she was, a. Uh, she, she was high on meth. She'd bang her head against the wall and like make me try to clean my room at five at 30 in the morning, five in the morning. And a lot of verbal abuse and a lot of like physical and stuff like that. What was your dad like? My dad, uh, he was a good guy, he, uh, but he wasn't really in the picture. Um, he, um, like, um, he, he would like call like every once, once a month or something like that. <clears throat> but, um, but every time we did re like reconnect did, yeah, reconnect, it would be good. We would skateboard together and stuff like that. And he was in a punk band. San Diego, and uh, how far did you go to school? Oh, I, I went to school, and oh, well, how far did I go to school? Like, uh, like, like, did you graduate high school? No, I didn't. I, I, I stopped at like eleventh uh, grade. Yeah, I got like seventy-two credits left or something like that. <clears throat> yeah. And what uh, what kind of things were you doing after school? Oh, uh, uh, after when, school? When you were done with school? Oh, um, like when I like stopped when you, going. When you to finished going to school. <clears throat> what kind of stuff were you doing? Were um, you working? Were you? Yeah, I worked like uh, construction jobs. Like, well, I, I lived in Hemet, and then my my grandma took me out of foster care. So, because um, I was in foster care for like a couple weeks, and my grandma took me and my sister out, to, and took us to San Bernardino Mountains, and uh, then my sister went to my other grandparents, and I, I stayed with my grandma and. I always been close to my grandma since like I was a little kid, and I was like visiting up the mo mountains. It was like kind of like an escape from like the bad, like you know, like I felt more open to talk to my grandma more than like than my mom. You know, she was kind of like my second mom. You know, my dad's mom, and uh, so like uh, I'll do like construction jobs here and there, like uh, drywall and stuff, and like um, landscaping <clears throat> stuff like that. You have an ashtray? Or? Right, right uh, your foot. Oh, uh, uh, right by my foot. Oh, just on the ground. On the right side. Oh, right here. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> but you, so, you, the the problem, the trouble you got into happened when? Oh, oh, the pro when I You're getting shot. Being shot. Uh, this happened like in 2020 during like COVID time. So recently. Yeah, just recently. Were, were you were you living a lifestyle that kind of led to that kind of trouble, or or is it just? Yeah, I, I was like. Um, I was like really deep in the coke, cocaine and stuff. And I was like, I was selling it and stuff. And like, like I would, uh, I'm not gonna say places, but like this, this bar that I'd go to, kind of like a biker bar, you know? And, but, uh, but right down the street is like a whole different ball game. It's like, that's where I got shot. It was like a place where like no one knew me really, you know? And that was random. I, I used to go there to eat food and stuff, but like, I never went there during the night, and I did, you know. <clears throat> but um, yeah, there was like three individuals, <clears throat> and uh, this one guy tried to shake uh, my girl's hand through my face, and I, I was like, I was like, back up. Like, what, what makes you think that's all right? You know what I mean? And he was like, fuck you, tweaker. And I was like. I was like, Tweaker, I'm a grown ass man. Like, last time I checked, like, who, like, 
like, I can do whatever the fuck I want. Like, who are you? And then he's like, well, what's up then? I'm like, what's up? And I knew I was on camera, you know? And uh, I was like, if you want to swing, go ahead and swing, man. And then uh, he was getting his fist ready. I'm like, like go ahead and swing. Because like, I was thinking in my head, I'll, I'll back up, which I did. And I backed up, and he swung. And then I, like, like, you know, I leaned back, and then I pushed him. And he, he slid on the ground and wrapped around a fucking bar stool. And I turned to my, my girl, and I get sucker punched. And I turned to his buddy, and I pushed him. And then, uh, and then all of a sudden, uh, I, I pushed him pretty hard. Uh, he fell into some, like, stool and drinks and shit. And then this, this dude came up, this black dude, and, like, little guy, you know, and he came up and pulled, put a gun in my face. This, this is crazy right here. But, um, uh, I was like, do I deserve to get shot over defending myself? Like, t I'm talking to this guy, he has a gun in my face. I have my hands up. I'm like, hey, the bartender and the owner, like, come out, and they're like, what's going on out here? Oh, what the fuck? Like, put that shit away. Like, we don't need that shit here, you know? And the guy, like, puts it back in his waist and looks at me. He's like, I'm just making sure my friends are all right. And, like, like smiles and pats his gun while he's putting it in his waist. And then, the like the bartender and the owner go back inside the building. I'm still in the back patio. And, uh, <clears throat> um, so I, right there, I was like, what am I going to do? You know, these guys are winded. I just pushed them. They're looking at me like, these are all, they were all African American or they were white. Well, the, the other two individuals are, I would say they're like, it doesn't really ma matter what the race was, but uh, yeah, they're Mex Mexican or they're Mexican. Uh, yeah, Mexican or white mixed or whatever. But like, either or, I was like, they you changed, know, it changed the I, I, I was in a fucked story. up spot, like, and I had a fucked up situation. Cause, and then my, when the guy put his gun away, he turned his back, and he was talking to a few people. That's when I, I, I snapped and I started talking. I started talking shit to him and. Uh, like, I, like, you know, when someone's back's turned, but you can still see their face. I, I went off for like a good, like 13 minutes, 15 minutes of just talking shit to this guy. Cause like, he just threatened my life, you know? And I, I was in a situation where like, I was like in fear. Like I thought like, if I leave right now, they're gonna, he's gonna shoot me in the parking lot. Cause I know he has a gun, but I don't know why, but I, I ended up pushing the guy with the gun. Like I, I, I pushed him hard into the table he flew and drinks fell and all that. And then he, he pulled out the gun and I, I froze. After I pushed him, I froze. I was like, oh, what the fuck did I just do? You know what I mean? Cause like, well, I was telling him, I was like, I want a fair fight. You know, I was like, like I'd rather have Arnold Schwarzenegger pointing a gun at me than like some weasel. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know what it was, but like I was talking shit like, like, he had a cross on his neck. I'm like, I bet you don't believe in Jesus. Like, I bet you don't even know a Bible verse. You know what I mean? Like, like, uh, I was like, I was talking shit. And then I could tell he was getting angry. And then when I, just, when I pushed him, though, it was like, uh, I froze. And then, like, I remember he was on the table. And he's pulling it out. And then he, he gets back on his feet off the table. And it was, like, kind of like, I don't know if this is going to kill you, but fuck you. And he shot three times. One of them uh, flew by my head. And one of them hit me. But I, I went like sideways like this because I didn't want to be like a target like this. I went like this. And it caught me right here. The bullet's still in me right here. This is a pretty big slug. Yeah, it's pretty big. I don't think it was a 40 or a 45. I don't know what. This is a pretty big gun. And then um, I got one in the leg. And then, like my first, I dropped. And uh, the first one, I was like, ah, what the, f like, you, like, your adrenaline pops off, and you're like, but, like, I dropped on the ground, and, like, my first, like, response was, like, run that way, or run down this way, or jump over this wall, but he started running, and I, I ended up chasing him. Like, I don't know why. I got up, and I started chasing him. Were there drugs in your system that made you? Uh, uh, yeah, like yeah, there was, yeah, I'm going to be honest. Yeah, there was cocaine, and, uh, like, uh meth and me and shit and i was like if you're clean you probably would have behaved differently yeah yeah definitely and uh I, and i'm not like yeah it's, it's hard, like yeah i definitely would have behaved differently or if i had a friend that was like hey this ain't a good idea man this guy has a gun why are you talking shit let's get the hell out of here 
But half of me was afraid because like the, the owner and the bartender went back in the building. They're not escorting the guy with the gun out. They're not like, t like I'm alone. And my girlfriend was fed up with my shit. She walked away at the time because she didn't want nothing to do with the situation. <clears throat> but later on, she did save my life though. But like, um, so he starts running and I chase him. And I, I was like, like in the movies, I was going like left and right. And he was like this, because like at the door, at the door, they were stopping him. Like everybody was running, because when the like gunshots are sh shot, everybody's f fleeing, you know. And like the door was clogged up, and he was trying to get out. And I was gonna, I was like, I'm gonna get that gun and shove it up his ass, you know. Like I want to get that gun, and I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> like so, I ran after him, and he was like, Oh, okay. And then like he he was surprised, you know. And like, Okay, you want some more? All right. And then like he was going like this, and I was like, Oh, you gonna go that way? I'm gonna go this way, you know? And I got the one in the neck. I, I'm not sure if I got two in the neck, but there's like, this one was like right between the two windpipes. And then I got one in the mouth and I'm like, oh, I fucked up, you know, like this is pretty bad. But I was like, I'm gonna get closer. And I started getting closer. And uh, he's trying to climb over this wall. He, Cause like, you know, when you let off shots, like someone that's doing a crime, they, you gotta go, you gotta leave because it, there's a window of opportunity to, you know, I don't, whatever, but like he was jumping on the, he was on the wall and he got me in the forehead and that's when I was like, that one I felt a lot, this one and this one I didn't, like I think my adrenaline was so up and crazy, but the one in the forehead, it was like, wow, it was like a computer like shutting down, it felt like, and uh, I was like, oh, it felt like a baseball bat and I was like, oh, and then like, and then he popped me in the eye, or the eyebrow it was like a half circle right here. I can still feel it. Uh, like, uh, I'm sure if it went in my eye socket and blew out, it would have been done, you know, but like it got me right here, which is still like the hard skull. I thought half my face was gone. And that's how you lost your eye? Yeah, that's how I lost my eye. And I was like, I thought half my face was gone. I'm like, damn, I'm, I'm going to die. And I'm like, all right, dude, I don't want to play no more because he's on the wall and then there's like a doorway where he was trying to leave. But now he's trying to jump over the wall, but I'm still chasing him pops me in the eye I, I run inside the building he he chases me and he's still trying to get headshot on my on me there's like bullets zzz, like it's a weird sound it's like a like a spinning like zippity sound like zzz, zzz. but he's shooting me inside the building I'm staggering because like I have one eye now and it's dark in there and I'm hearing like glass breaking behind me and wood breaking like he's trying to get me and uh I remember stumbling and uh, um, my girlfriend told me that he, he was like pistol whipping me. Like, I, I remember like it was like lightning, like ding, ding. Like I was thinking it was, could have been from the bullet in my head, but like after I look at my head a few times, there's a lot of dinks and dents and like he was hitting me good. Like I think he unlo unloaded the clip and then like, you know, it's starting to hit me. And my uh, girlfriend jumped on him and uh, he was a little a little guy, and she's she's not a big girl, like uh, she's not fat or anything. She's like fit, but she's a little taller than him. And she jumped on him and said, "Why are you doing this? Stop doing this! Like leave him alone. You're hurting him, or something like or something like that." And uh, I guess he dropped his uh, he, he dropped his gun and his cell phone, and he and he grabbed his gun and he ran, but he left his cell phone, and that's how he got caught. <clears throat> but um, so he did get caught. Yeah, he did get caught. Where, where is he today? Uh, he's in prison now for a long time yeah but um <clears throat> i know you like uh but yeah and this like this mexican guy picked me up and like me and him weren't really that cool at all i remember in the beginning of the night he was kind of like the guy was giving me attitude and stuff but he picked he felt bad and he picked me up and we started running towards the kitchen and I was thinking in my head, like, I just took all these shots and I'm running with this guy. I think I'm going to make it. But I didn't, I had no idea. Like, like, uh, I thought that it hit me on the top of the head, like, like you know, grazed. But I, I didn't know it was right in the forehead. Do you, like, you have a scar on your forehead? Yeah, I got a scar right here. This is where the bullet entered. And then what do you have on top of your head? Uh, I, have, uh, I have three plates right here and eight screws. Like, they did a really good job. Like, I don't know, like... Uh, but I ran into the uh, kitchen with this Mexican guy. And I remember like laying there in the hallway and uh, 
uh, I remember they yelled, someone yelled out, the shooter's still in the building. Like, the, he's still in the building, the shooter. And I thought he was going to come back and be like, hey, dude, remember me, motherfucker? And like, try, you know, finish me. <clears throat> but um, the, that didn't happen. And I guess he eventually was out of the building. I remember the cops came in. And this Mexican guy's telling me, like, one, two, three. He kept saying one, two, three to say it out loud. But it, um, the cops came in. They walked over me with their guns and stuff because they got to, like, secure the perimeter, make sure, like, everyone's safe before EMS comes to help me because uh, they're, like, talking about a football game and shit. Like, I don't know, like, when they, I don't know. They're talking about something. But I was like, where's EMS, you know? But, like... I didn't realize they have to secure the perimeter and all that. <clears throat> and uh, I'm sorry, I'm a little nervous and shit. But uh, no, but um, it's, um, I remember talking to the Mexican guy. I don't know his name, but I think he showed up to court. To, to, like, because I think he was a cook or something. I'm not sure, but he like he showed up to like court to testify against the guy. I don't. I still don't know his name. I should figure that one out. But like. I, I was like, it was like in the movies, like, am I going to die? And he's like, you're not going to die. And I'm like, you know how you know, like a grown man is lying to you. Like, like, all right, I guess I'm going to die, huh? Like, I was like, I, so I'll just relax, you know? And I almost like passed out, you know? But he's like, he's like, no, like, I don't know if he slapped, slapped me, but he's like, I know he's shaking me. He's like, one, two, three, say one, two, three. And I started yelling one, two, three. And I remember my girlfriend was like real hysterical, but I didn't want to be like, 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 babe, I, I couldn't look at her, you know? I just kept saying, one, two, three, one, two, three, I'm going to live, you know? But I didn't know I had a hole in my forehead, you know? Like, like of course, like, anybody around is going to be like, this guy is going to die. You know, he, like, he got hit, like, so many times. <clears throat> but the, the ambulance finally show up, and they're... Um, they're they're taking their their sweet time, you know, and I, I I was like, can you guys hurry up a bit, you know, because I think they're getting ready to call the coroner, like not like they're like you know they seem like they're putting the gurney away kind of shit. I'm like, hey, do I have to? Uh, is this going to be a lawsuit? Am I gonna have to then all of a sudden they speeded up and like got me on the gurney, <clears throat> and uh, I remember uh, getting on the I remember the whole thing until I got to the hospital, but like I got on the gurney. And uh, I actually thought my girlfriend was following us the whole time. It was actually a cop, like, uh, following the... Because they thought it was, like, gang-related or something like that. They thought it was something, like... We, I don't know what they thought, really, but, like, I'm sure, like, any kind of shooting thing would uh, happen. They didn't think anything, but... Um, <clears throat> but um, I kept saying one, two, three in the in the ambulance, and they're like, what the fuck are you saying, dude? Why are you saying that over and over? And... Uh, I think that probably kept me, I don't know if it kept the oxygen in me saying that over and over, but, but I was thinking in my head, like, if I'm, um, on my way to the, like in the movies, like, like usually it's like on the way to the hospital, you usually die or right when you get there, you know? And like, I'm like, all right, I'm almost to the hospital. I'm, I'm, pro I'm going to live, I'm going to make it, you know? And then when I, when I got to the hospital, all these nurses and doctors were like staring at me and they weren't even saying anything. It was quiet. And I'm like, I was like, don't let me die. Like I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. I'm not a piece of shit. Like I have a son and like, I'm like, please don't let me die. Like, and they're just like staring at me. But I'm thinking now that I didn't know that I actually had a hole in my forehead. So they probably never seen that in a long time, like working there. I mean, I'm sure they've seen a lot of crap. Did they remove the bullet from your forehead? No, they left it. They left the bullet in my brain. And what about the one in your eye? Uh, the one in my eye blew up, and uh, the one in my mouth actually broke six of my teeth, took out six of my teeth, and bounced up in the roof of my uh, mouth into my sinus cavity. There was a hole in my sinus cavity for a minute. Uh, that's a whole different story, because like, they ended up finding out about that later on, and they got me into surgery again, because I was like enjoying applesauce and shit. I'm like, I was like enjoying, I was like, where's the mashed potatoes and cheese? I wanted something like... And they're like, hey, wait a minute. Like, this guy has a hole in the roof of his mouth. Because they took a piece of my cheek and plugged up the hole. Because they don't want, um, this is before the surgery. They're like, we need to get him into surgery now. And I'm like, can you guys not put me in a, on a tube again, you know? Because I was just, just enjoying food again. But then, sure enough, I woke up and they had a tube in my nose. And they're feeding me through my nose with, like, the fluid and stuff. 
But I kept thinking, like, I'll sacrifice this di discomfort so my mouth can heal. Because, like, there's a lot of things they don't want to tell you in the hospital to stress you out and stuff like that, which is understandable. <clears throat> so they got me into surgery, and I woke up, and I had, like, I was getting fed with the tube. And, uh... <clears throat> But uh, what was I gonna say? I forgot. Um, so you, you've you've fully recovered now? No, yeah, I've fu um, yeah. Surprisingly, I've fully for like. Um, what was it? Uh, but yeah, they left this bullet in. I still got to get that checked out. I don't know what about what the one in the neck if, if they left that in or they took it out. But this one inside blew up in my face. The one in my eye, like it. it hit my eyebrow and it took out my eye. I don't know, I don't think it didn't go like, yeah, it just took out my eye. <clears throat> but the one in my brain, the, the neurologic surgeon showed me pictures and uh, uh, it, it broke through my skull and a little, I, I don't know if the bullet blew up on my, because the front of your skull is pretty hard. It was like the hardest part of the skull and like a little piece flew inside and it stopped right in between the two pieces of meat, like on the pictures. It was just like either to the right, to the left. I went, uh, you know what I mean? Like vegetable or whatever. But they're really surprised, you know? Are there any mental effects from, from this? Yeah, there's like, like I get a lot of emotional effects. Like I get, um, get a lot of anxiety and stuff. Like I have, a, um, I had a ton of PTSD from it. <clears throat> like, um, uh, Kept getting nightmares a lot, like a, a, like a dream. I was in like a grocery store, and it was like the guy, the same guy, like like the, the shooters in the building kind of thing. And then like I see the guy in the aisle in the dream. I still kind of remember it, and I'm like, not this again. You know what I mean? Like in my dream, I'm like, I'm out. Like you know, I'm not doing this shit again. But like that that sucked. And then like also, I thought like. Like when I woke up in the hospital, it was like on a Thursday, I went in and then I woke up on a Sunday. So it was like 30, 40 hours of like surgery on me. And I, I woke up and uh, there was this, uh, there was this black dude in a mask cause it was during COVID. I thought he was one of the family members of the shooter. I was, I got scared and like, I didn't know what was going on, but he was actually like a DA or like a, not a DA, like a, a homicide detective. That's what he was. He was a homicide detective. <clears throat> And he was just talking to me and stuff, but like, <clears throat> but uh, yeah. And then, uh, my friend Brad, he lied. He, uh, my sister was there, and he lied and said he was my brother. He actually has one eye, but he was born like that. And he was kind of the last person I wanted to see once I figured out I lost my eye. It wasn't like anything personal. It was like, come on, Brad. I don't like you know. Like I just woke up and I was like, he's like, now we have a we're a pair now. And I'm like, oh, we're a pair. I'm like, uh, I mean, I mean, you lost your eye when you're born, but I lost, you know what I mean? But like, he was just trying to be there to be, like for comfort. What have you learned from all of this? I learned like, uh, uh, basically like, uh, like your pride will it'll get you killed. Like, you know what I mean? Your mouth can, you gotta watch your mouth. And uh, also when you're in like, environment or territory or not like if you're in the like, area and you don't do your homework on it you know what i mean you're gonna you get results you know like that you know what i mean and like i was alone and because i told him i was like let's have a fair one let's have a fight blah, blah blah but it's not like i was like i don't have no weapons on me but he doesn't know that at all you know what i mean like but like i don't know down there like like holding a gun is like holding a cell phone for some people. But the the drugs that gave you the uh, yeah the courage I, the courage to smart the, off the, the guy in a biker and, I, I think it's like the the ignorance inside the brain. Like, well, I'm gonna show them that I'm not like some soft white boy. That's like like I'm the, I'm like you could be that like. I don't know. You're not gonna. You're not the badass. You know what I mean? Like it ain't like it ain't like that. You know. But um. How was how was your life changed from after this? Well, um, <clears throat> I'm like um. You're still using. Um, um, here and there, like I relapsed. I was like a whole. To be honest, like a whole year clean and sober, and then like. 
um, I got a warehouse job and then they let me go. And then like, well, they, they, it was just for like the Thanksgiving rush kind of thing. I thought it was going to be like a long time, <clears throat> but, um, it was just like a temp agency and, uh, just recently. Yeah. Like a whole year I was just smoking weed and that's it. No, no alcohol, no drugs. But uh, did a little bit of cocaine on uh, New Year's Eve and drank and uh, kind of felt stupid. And then like, but I realized like I can always go back. I have like a lot of control over my mind. But um, do, you, do you blame the drugs for why this all happened? Oh, oh me getting shot. Um, at first I was blaming like I was blaming everything but me at first. And then I realized it was like, you no, know, I got to like take like. I got, I got, um, what is it? Like take responsibility, take for responsibility for what, like for what it was. And it was basically like, at the, like you got to learn how to walk away. And like, but you know, like I thought in my head, I can, I can go all over San Bernardino, Inland Empire, anywhere I want. Like no one's going to mess with me, but it ain't like that. Like, you know, like, like, Someone like, I don't know. At the end of the day, like, yeah, I don't know. Like, yeah, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> Do you have kids? Yeah, I have a, a, I have a nine-year-old. Are you like, in his life? No, I'm not. Like, uh, I'm, I'm working on that right now. <clears throat> I have to get like. Uh, well, she took off on me when I was like, when she, when he was three. And then like, I was sober like the whole time, like right when he was born, like I was like holding him. I'm like, I, I got, like I was drunk one night and I was holding him and I was like, I got to stop alcohol and shit. This is like, I felt like a piece of shit. Like if I stumble like one time or something and hurt him, like, yeah, you know, like, so I, I quit alcohol and I wasn't doing hard drugs at the time or anything, but like for three years and then like right when she took them away, like I went right like into like that mode again. Like, I mean, like, well before, I mean, I, I don't know, I dabbled here and there, but like, <clears throat> but I can't use that as an excuse either. You know what I mean? I got to own up to that shit too. Like, like, <clears throat> what would you say is the most important lesson you've learned from all of this? Um, from being shot or like or just you're, you're just in life in general oh just life in general like uh be grateful and like you know like and that that your life can get snatched you know like i could have lost my other eye could have died it could have died um like i've had a few friends that well i had one friend that got shot he got shot by one bullet and died you know and it was over an argument like who's the biggest and toughest but the gun will take care of that conversation real quick you know what i mean and, uh, like, I, I never really, like, like, it, it sucks that sometimes, like, it takes situations like that to, to realize what it, what it's about, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, like, I could have got my life taken from me. But also, when I, when I was in the hospital, I was crying about my eye. Like, I lost my eye, not my fucking eye. But this nurse was like, you're walking, you're talking, you're going to the, you're going to the bathroom and back. Um, this girl got shot in the back by her boyfriend and she's paralyzed now. She's 19 and her parents, parents take care of her. And, uh, and I, I was like, I got to take that blessing for her. Cause like, you know, I'm, I'm a lot older than her. She's 19. Uh, I was just like, I got to take that blessing and be grateful. You know what I mean? <clears throat> you get depressed now? Huh? You get depressed over this? Oh yeah. All the time. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. It's a, it's a different kind of depression. Like, like I used to get depressed once in a while, but it's a, it's a lot different. <clears throat> what do you plan on doing now? Um, right now, um, well, I was I was trying to get disability, and they denied me over and over and over and over. So I got a lawyer, and like, and I got the judge. We, we had like a court thing on the phone, and like. The judge was like, uh, like, good luck to you, Robert. I grant you da-da-da, you know? And they were trying to prove, like, 
if I was able to work with one eye, like they're talking about some football player that could throw the football pretty good with one eye and all that. And I was trying to tell him like, I got a bullet in my brain. And when I bend down to pick stuff up, it's like a lot of pressure in my head. And like, um, but they're like, they granted it to me. And then like two or three weeks later, I get a thing in the mail. It was a real big disappointment, uh, denied. But I was just trying to like, I wasn't trying to milk the system or anything. I was just trying to get some help. You know, I was, I was thinking I could do side work on the side to like, like, you know, get something going. <clears throat> like I'm working on getting a prosthetic eye and, uh, cause I'm, I'm tired of people like staring at me and stuff. And if it's like, like in the warehouse job, everybody's like staring at me after a while. It's just like, whatever, like, you know, I, I, I didn't explain my story to anybody or anything like that, but like, I, I do, I, I can relate on people getting shot though. Like, you know, and I, I realize it, you know, I can definitely relate like what they've been through and how it is. Like, I'm thankful that I have like family that were there for me and like, Cause it could have been a whole different situation, you know, <clears throat> but I went in, I went in there on like October 17th or no, wait, it was September 17th and I got out October 6th. So it was pretty good. It was fast recovery. I almost escaped the hospital too and stuff like that. I was like jumping over the fence and they put a shot in my ass and shit. Cause I wanted to leave. I was like, I, I hate, I hate hospitals, you know, like I had a concussion in eighth grade and I got airlifted to ICU. Uh, then the children's area hearing kids screaming and stuff when I woke up but like I don't know like uh I was really like disrespectful to a lot of the nurses and doctors my uncle told me you gotta go back there and like and, and, and thank them for helping you and being there for you and he's right and the one nurse I wasn't like it's a small world too you know what I mean like the one nurse I was nice to was my friend's mom you know, from, from where I'm from. It was just like, you know, but, but also being shot in the frontal lobe, like, I don't know. There's, there's a lot of things. <clears throat> All right, Robert. Thank, thank you so much for sharing your story. Yeah, you know, yeah. Th th thank you. I wish you lots of luck from here.